little smoky. Let's get it on. Want to see Angelin? I'll show you Angelin. Just give me the stuff. You have to let me nibble. Oh, boy, I would like to get my hands on that guy. But you'll knock it off! Take them to cook a steak around here. They went out to kill the cow. Yeah, we take it easy, you just order. They don't have to kill the cow. They can wait a little longer, it'll die of old age. How's the feeding coming? Got any idea what the assignment is yet? No. Can't figure it out either. It's just something different about this one. I don't know what it is. Two maxi steak dinners, one for you and... Uh, uh, they're both for me. I get full just watching. Would you uh, just bring me some ketchup? Ketchup coming right up. Uh, well, you work on the assignment, I'll work on these. <laughs> hey, baby. How would you like to go for a ride on a big hog? I wouldn't want to hurt your back. <laughs> hey, you got a bad mouth on you, princess. I got a lot of work to do. Come on, don't be rude to the customers. Take your hand off my arm. Sure, I'd rather put it around your waist. Let's dance. Hey, leave her alone. Oh, Smokey the Bear to the rescue. I don't want any trouble, just let me go. There won't be any trouble. Will there, Smokey? No, not if you leave her alone. Hey, this guy thinks he's real tough. Hey, macho man! <laughs> Go get him, bud. Hey, Mark, Jonathan, stay out of this. Hey, look out, here he comes. Oh, tough guy. Now listen, fella. You either leave that lady alone, or I'm gonna pull your earring off and stick it up your nose. Whoa! You want to rumble, Smokey? Take that. Let's get it on. <laughs> Mark! Mark, let oh. me handle this. Will you stay out of this? If I can't whip two guys with earrings on, I ought to just hang it up. I just don't see what you're so mad about. <laughs> you don't see what I'm so mad about. <laughs> you don't see what I'm so mad about? Oh, now listen, we're turning that thing down in there, pal! Come on! 
You want to see what I'm mad about? You want to see what I am mad about? Look. What? What do you mean, what? I got a knot on my head here, and I got a shiner. Hey, look, you're the one that told me to stay out of it. Well, what are you listening to me for? You're the angel. Look, I finally stepped in, didn't I? Huh? Oh, well, that was a big deal. You go poop, 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 poop. Look, you don't have a mark on you. Well, of course not, but that's not my fault. It was because you got the stuff. Because I'm an angel. I tell you, it's not fair, Jonathan. I mean, you haven't got a mark on you. I'm half dead. My friend, I'm all the way dead. That's how I got the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, pal, will you knock that music off and that? Turn it down! Mark, will you calm down? What do you mean, calm down? No, Jonathan, it is not fair. We go on these assignments together, right? I do half the work, and you get all the stuff. Hey, well, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about it. Well, the boss could if he wanted to. I mean, look at this. I, look at it. A big knot up here on my head. I couldn't even eat my steak. Just one time, I would like to go on an assignment where I get the stuff and you get the appetite. Marco, I wouldn't talk to you. Well, I want him to hear me. Come on, boss, what do you say? Just one time, just give me an assignment, all right? I don't care what it is. Just give me the stuff and I'll handle it. Mark, Mark, you know the old saying, don't wish for something, you just might get it? Might get it? Might get it? I want to get it. Come on, boss, what do you say? How about we trade places? You want to see Angelin? I'll show you Angelin. Just give me the stuff. Say nothing. He doesn't listen to me, he never. Oh, boy, I would like to get my hands on that guy. Will you knock it off? Hey, Jonathan. Well, I just hurt anymore. And the lump's gone off my head. <laughs> More stuff. <laughs> I got the stuff. <laughs> I got the stuff. <laughs> what, ain't got anything to say? I'm hungry. Is this where the assignment is? I don't know. I just got a feeling we're supposed to be here. Couldn't you be a little more specific? Will you calm yourself? I'm working on it, dude. Whoa. Yeah? Right. <laughs> Mrs. Carter, second floor, Department of Social Services. What are we going to be doing? Getting into pits when you don't know anything. <laughs> Mr. Smith, Mr. Gordon. I'm glad you're here. Mary Creswell was originally supposed to take this case, but she just Just had, had a baby boy. <laughs> well, yes, how did you know? Uh, Mark is, is very uh, intuitive in that way. Yes. Right. Well, well, good. Because I think it's going to take about all of your intuition and sensitivity to handle this case. Hey, no matter what it is, we can handle it. You know? No sweat. No sweat, Mr. Gordon. Yeah. I mean, what's her problem? Her parents splitting up, or is she on drugs? Or... Oh, no. Oh, no. Mark, what's wrong? She's dying. Jonathan, she's gonna die. <laughs> Bradley? Yes. I'm Mike Gordon. This is Jonathan Smith. We're the new social works assigned to Lee's case. Oh, yes. Mrs. Carter said you'd be coming by. Oh, my husband's inside. Come on in. Thank you. This is my husband, Jim. How are you? Great. Have a seat.
Uh, can I get either of you anything? No, oh, no, we're fine, thank you. So you, you two are taking Mary's place, huh? Uh, yes, we are. I understand she had a little boy. Yeah. Well, I'm happy for her. You tell her that next time you see her, right? She's been very sweet. We appreciate it. Yes, I, I'll do that. Listen, I am going to have to ask a couple of questions and kind of update this file. It says here that the uh, doctors are considering another bone marrow transplant. Yeah, that's right. Do you think you'll go ahead with that? Well, I, I don't know. We, uh, we haven't decided yet. They don't give it much of a chance. She's already had one transplant, and uh, there's the pain, you know. It's painful. She's been through so much already. Uh, the chemo is tough. You know, you wonder when it's time to say enough, you know? Just stop hurting our little girl. And then you think, but it's a chance, you know? So you gotta take it. We've been going through this uh, two years almost, and all the time we've been thinking that she was gonna get better. You know, that the doctors must be wrong because this can't be happening to our baby. Uh, she, uh, she wanted, she wants to be a marine biologist. <laughs> Ever since she was a teeny kid, you couldn't keep her out of the water. We always said she was part fish. <laughs> <laughs> she, she scuba dives. She knows every book Cousteau ever wrote. Other kids wanted dolls for Christmas. She wanted us to contribute money to save the whales. That was her dream. That is her dream. To, uh, to do something, you know? Make some contribution in that area. There's going to be a Save the Dolphins campaign thing in a couple of months. Boy, she could tell you all about dolphins, you know. See, that's why she's not sure about the bone marrow transplant. I think she figures, well, she doesn't have much of a chance anyway, and... If she could just, you know, just be around for that. That's all she wants. And she's, uh, she's so scared. She doesn't talk about it. But she's so scared of dying. Does she have a little brother and sister? That's right. How are they dealing with them? Uh, the ten-year-old, Bobby, our youngest. He goes around locking all the doors and windows every night. The counselor says he's... he's trying to lock out death. And Jennifer, our middle girl, she's afraid to touch Lee anymore. She's afraid she'll get sick. And she's just... I don't know, she's just kind of giving up. She used to be a very good student. Now... Nothing. Mr. and Mrs. Bradley, what can we do? I don't think there's anything anybody can do. Talk to her. She's, she's starting to shut us out as if, I don't know, as if, as if she wanted to protect us. <laughs> can you believe that? She's worrying about us. Can you believe it? From what you just said about her, I can believe it. Honey, there's a Mr. Gordon here. He's the new social worker. Hi. Hi. You feel up to talking a little? Yeah, sure, I guess. Why not? Well... I'll leave you two alone. Can I get you anything? No, thanks, Mom. <clears throat> well, I'm Mark. I hear you're real interested in fish and stuff, huh? Uh-huh. Folks say you want to be a marine biologist. Yeah. Well, I bet you'd be a good one. 
Won't be around. You don't know that for sure. Yes, I do. But I heard with a bone marrow <sighs> transplant, there's a chance. I'm not going to have any transplants. How come? I mean, if there's a chance. There's so much you could do in this world, so much you could contribute. I don't want to, that's all. Well, um, what about this dolphin thing your mom was telling me about? Uh, some kind of campaign or something you want to be a part of? Yeah, save the dolphins. Fishermen kill hundreds of thousands of them in their nets every year. Well, aren't there laws? I thought I read about some kind of law. Sure, there are laws, but they need to make them stronger. There's so much money being pumped into lobby against it this year. There's a good chance they'll take it off the books or water it down so much. Everything's money. I mean, there's no money to be made in saving dolphins, is there? No, well, I guess not. It's the money. That's what it is. I just told you that. No, no, no. I'm not talking about the dolphins. I'm talking about your operation. That's why you won't have the bone marrow transplant. It's the money. It's not true. Yes, it is. You're afraid that your folks don't have the money. That's exactly what you're thinking. Who are you, the great Kreskin? Just leave me alone, okay? She said it was the money? That's ridiculous. I know, but she's got it in her head that that's the reason. Look, I think if you talk to her, explain to her that it's not the money. <laughs> sure, you bet. Why should money be a problem, huh? Hey, didn't mean it like that. I know it can't be easy. Look, Mr. Gordon, uh, I know you're trying to help, but uh, maybe you should just let us uh, work this out for ourselves. Huh? Sure, I wanted you to know how she felt. I'm better qualified to know how my daughter feels. Look, uh, let me get this stuff raked up, okay? Here's the money. What? You are worried about the money. She isn't making it up in her head. You're damn right I'm worried. What the hell do you know about it? The years of tests, of hospitals, of operations. Go away, Mr. Gordon. Just go away. Hi, Jennifer. Oh. Hi, Mr. Smith. What are you doing here? I thought I'd walk along with you. We could talk a little bit. About what? If anything comes to your mind. Am I part of your caseload, too? Well, you might say that. We try to work with the whole family. Yeah, well, I'm fine. Well, your parents told me you used to get straight A's till Lee got sick. Is this about my grades? Give me a break. Who cares about my stupid grades? Who cares about anything? Well, your parents, for one thing, that's why they mentioned it. Well, I don't care. What's the use? Well, I used to think school was pretty important. Yeah, well, I used to think a lot of things were pretty important, okay? I don't anymore. Why not? Because people don't live very long in my family, okay? Good enough for you? You don't really think that you're going to get sick because Lee did. We have the same genes, don't we? We come from the same family. And you have one color hair and she's got another. Jennifer, you're not your sister and she's not you. I never thought kids could really die. I thought it was just for grandparents and stuff like that. Well, I was stupid. It doesn't have anything to do with how good you are. Don't give me any of that God stuff about how he looks out for you, because he doesn't. 
We didn't do anything wrong. What's she being punished for? She's not. She's got cancer, doesn't she? That's not a punishment. What would you call it, then? A disease. A vicious disease that, that very, very rarely strikes kids your age. I'm scared. I'm so scared. Don't you see, that's why it's so important to talk about it. Just bring that fear out in the open so you can deal with it. Because then you can help Lee deal with it. She needs you now. She needs her sister. What can I do? I can't help her. Oh, sure you can. Come on, you know, there's lots of things a kid can't talk to their parents about. You know, secrets you can only tell your brother or sister. Aren't you and Lee like that? We used to be. Before, before she got sick. Oh, I'd be that way again. Jennifer, you're alive. And your sister's alive. Life's so short, no matter how long you live. God, what a shame it would be to waste any of it worrying about what might happen. I just, uh, I love her, and I, I don't... don't tell me, kiddo. Tell her. She needs to hear that from you. And I think you need to say it. What? Well, Tommy Henderson asked me to go with him, and he's real nice and everything, and maybe I would, except for Maria Park, so you know the girl with the red hair is in my homeroom? Well, she said that she thinks that Brian Wilkerson likes me, and maybe he might ask me to go with them. and I mean, I really like him a lot, but I don't want to hurt Tommy Henderson's feelings either, so, I mean... I don't know what to do. Jennifer. I mean, come on, give me a break. I got cancer. What do I care? It won't big deal your cancer. I'm talking about boys here. This is important. Bobby was asleep already. Seems like all he does lately is sleep. He's a growing boy. He needs his sleep. This is cozy. Mm hmm I want to get pregnant. What? I want to get pregnant. I want to have another baby. Lisa, is this a joke? I want to feel some life inside of me. Well, let's go out for some Cajun food. 
Jim, I'm serious. So am I, Lisa. Forget it. <sighs> I don't know what you can be thinking. We're going to lose her, Jim. We're going to lose our firstborn. So what do you want to do? You want to have a replacement child? Yes. Lisa, for crying out loud. I'm trying to figure out if we can afford to have a bone marrow transplant for Lee without bankrupting us, without losing the house, everything we've got on an operation that probably won't even work, and you're talking about having another kid. How can you even think about it? Is there any other pressure you'd like to put on this family? All you ever think about is the money. Because I'm the one who has to make it. I'm the one who's responsible here. I'm the one who has to see to it that there's enough for the two other kids we've already got. Where are you going? Out. Give me a beer. Oh, brother. The one seat that's left and the one bar that's open, and it's next to you. Uncanny, isn't it? How are you doing? Great. OK. Nice shirt. Look, Jim, if you feel like talking, I got nothing better to do than listen. Well, how about you want to shoot some pool? We don't have to talk. You know what my wife told me tonight? She wants to get pregnant. I mean, the last two years, Lee's illness, it's eaten up all our insurance. <laughs> we don't have any catastrophic illness insurance. This is my regular health plan at work. There ought to be catastrophic illness insurance in this country. Well, we sure as hell don't have any. From now on, it comes out of our pocket. First thing it goes is the savings for the kids' college. The only other thing I got is the house. I mean, we're cutting into muscle here. I got two other kids I got to raise, and she wants another one. I mean, I'm the father, damn it. I'm responsible here. You in the service, Jim? Yeah, yeah, Vietnam. Grunt. <laughs> Me too. It's a squad leader. Yeah, squad leader. Got all the way to E4 before they busted me. I used to tell that same lie to myself. Lie? What lie? What are you talking about? I had a friend who got hit. Actually, a lot of them got hit. But this one guy and I, we were real close. Would you think old Mark broke? No way. No, I said, hey, I don't have time to cry. I don't have time for pain. I am a squad leader. I am responsible. I have work to do. Besides, I couldn't control it. I could not control the enemy's incoming rounds. I could not control who would hit. So I looked around for the things that I could control. And I said, hey, that is all I am going to think about. Like you, right now. Pretending that all you're thinking about is the money. I don't blame you, Jim. Really, I, I don't blame you. She's my baby. She's, she's my little girl. I love her so much. Let it go, pal. Let it go. How'd it go? 
Well, you were right. I never should have judged him. Well, I mean, that guy has been through hell and back. He loves that little girl so much, I mean, he'd do anything for her. But. But what? But a lot of things. I mean, it's not just the money for the operation. Well, sure, you know, that's part of it. The man has worked so hard his whole life to save enough money, you know, to put his kids through college, to buy a home. And this operation will wipe it all out. But it wasn't just the money. No. No, it's the fear and the pain of getting their hopes up again and then having the roof fall in. Of having to watch their little daughter suffer through all that pain again. And maybe all for nothing. Nothing. Oh. You know what I tried to do tonight, driving home? Hmm? Tried to use the stuff. Yeah, I said, all right. All right, I want to see the money for that operation. I want to see the money for the operation. I want to see it right here on the front seat beside me. And bingo. Nothing. No miracle. It's not that easy, Mark, and it shouldn't be. Miracles happen, don't they, Jonathan? Well, sure they do, but they're not brought about by wishing. They're brought about by doing, by people loving and caring. What would be the greatest miracle you could think of? World of peace. No more threats, no more war, no more hate. And all it would take to accomplish that would be loving and caring. But, Jonathan, how do you reach them? How do you get them to hear that message when all they ever hear on the news is, is war and killing and disaster? Make them hear. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, well, I'll just call up Tom Brokaw, I'll call up Dan Rather, and I'll say, uh, hey, this is Mark Gordon. I'd like to be on the news tonight. <laughs> now, what do you think they'd say to that? I don't know. But this is your assignment. And you've got the stuff. Lee, all I'm saying is, what if the money wasn't the problem? What if it could be gotten without touching your folks' money? If it could just, uh, you know, fall out of the sky? Would you do it then? Would you have the transplant then? I don't know. I'm so scared of going through all that, and then... Honey, I know. I know, we're all scared. Lee, listen to me. You once said you wanted to make a contribution, to make your life count for something. And was that just talk, or was it true? More than anything else, I want it to matter that I was alive. And stop talking in the past tense. You're still here. You're not the only one around who needs money for some kind of special medical care. You're pretty, you're bright, you're articulate, and you have the ability to get people to listen to you. You know you do. So what do you say we get out and try to raise some money? Not just for you, but for the other kids around like you. That's a contribution you can make. And maybe that's a contribution that only you can make. And what do you say? OK. But how are we going to get those people to listen to us? You just let me take care of that. Excuse me, Mr. Harris. Yes, that's right. Who are you? How'd you get in here? I'm here about the story you're gonna run on the news tonight. What story? A story about a little girl named Lee Bradley. She needs a bone marrow transplant. And a lot of other kids who need money for operations, too. Uh, look, I don't think we're doing that story tonight. Too. You are now. <laughs> I don't think you understand. I mean, we got the vice president here, and we got the town council meeting, and tonight's the first segment on our three-part series on Hawaiian bikinis. Yeah, but now you got a better idea. Your station's going to get behind helping these kids. You're going to go all the way with them. Because you know it's right. It's more important than bikinis. I mean, you can run that story any time. This little girl is running out of time. Look, look pal, I, I know this is important to you, but TV news is a business. I mean, we're talking ratings. I'm, I'm sorry, maybe next week, but no chance this week. Well, have it your way. I didn't want to use the stuff, but... What stuff? Hey. 
What are you trying to threaten me? Now, why don't you pick up that phone and tell Donaldson you're going to cancel the bikini story? Excuse me a minute. Donaldson, please. Yeah, Clive Harris. Donaldson, uh, we're going to postpone that bikini series tonight. That's right, because we can run it any time. Now, look, don't argue with me, because it's the right thing to do. Hi. My name is Lee Bradley. And like all of you who are watching, I'm going to die. In my case, though, it might come a little sooner. Like real soon if I don't get an operation. There are a lot of kids like me who face operations that could save our lives. The only problem is these things cost money, a lot of money. So many times when death takes a young life, we shake our heads and we say it's a horrible thing, but there's nothing we can do. Except that there is something that people can do. And it's the easiest thing in the world. It's giving money, a little or a lot, whatever you can afford. Hey! To research Down a minute. for treatment centers or, or in this case, to the fund that we're setting up. And as my friend Mark calls him, Maybe the boss upstairs pays attention when you do something to help somebody out. I don't know, maybe it's, it's buying cheap brownie points in heaven. I don't know about that. Dinner, honey. Hey, what I do know in my class is that we all share the same planet. And we all lose when a young life gets cut off. Because nobody knows the contributions that each of us can make if we only have the time. So think about that tonight when you're home with your families and maybe hug your kids a little closer. Please help. Yes. Oh, Harry, say your name. Yes, I will. Oh, thank you. Uh, listen, uh, guys like you keep calling, we're gonna make it just fine. Yeah, right. Thanks a lot. So I know what you mean. You bet I will. You bet. Goodbye. Thank you. This guy wants a hamburger stand. He's gonna donate one day's profits. They're gonna be around $500. It's unreal. Hey, when you got the stuff, you got the stuff. No, no. She's the one who's got the stuff. And the people who are giving, that's the real stuff, you know? I know what you mean. Lee Bradley, three, two, oh, six. As I am speaking, Lee Bradley is undergoing a bone marrow transplant that doctors say may give her a chance to live. X-ray technician. Mom, can I have some money for a soda? What? I want a soda. Oh, Bobby, please, just leave me alone right now, okay? Hey, you know where the soda machine is? Yeah, around the corner at the end of the hall. Yeah, come on. I'm thirsty, too. Let's get one. Thanks. Ah, uh, not easy being the youngest sometimes, is it? Nobody ever pays any attention to me anymore. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Why not? Because of God. Well, what's God got to do with it? Well, he hears everything, Mr. Smith. Does he? I don't know. That's what they said in Sunday school. <sighs> so a lot of people he's got to listen to, don't you think? I don't know, you know. I don't even go to Sunday school anymore. But I'm starting up again real soon. Gonna start going to church again, too. Good. What kind of soda do you want? Root beer, please. There you go. How come you're starting back at church again? Well, it's... It's pretty confusing, you know? I mean... 
I believed all that stuff they said, that God always hears and he always looks after you. Then Lee got sick and I prayed she'd get better, but she got worse. And then I didn't believe in him anymore. Then I figured, well, you know, maybe she got worse because I didn't believe. I mean, maybe I got God mad at me and that's why he's doing all this stuff to Lee. So I made him a deal. I said, you let her get better and I'll go back, see? You really think that God would do all this to Lee just to get back at you? Boy, I don't think so. That doesn't sound like God to me. Let me tell you something, Bobby. God loves you and your sister very, very much. And he isn't the one who made her sick. I wish I could believe that. Thanks for the soda, Mr. Smith. On the local scene, more good news about Lee Bradley, the young girl who has led a crusade in Seaview to raise money for her bone transplant and for operations for many other children in the area. Doctors released a report today stating that all signs are good and they are awaiting the results of further tests to determine whether Lee is in remission. Oh, what a kid, huh? Hey, what a fighter. Hey, you're really proud of yourself, aren't you? Well, I gotta tell you, you know, I was a little nervous when I got the whole assignment and the stuff, you know. But yeah, I really am proud of myself. She couldn't have had a better angel on the job. Yeah. I guess I better check on what room she's in. <laughs> What's your name? Excuse me. You tell me what room Lee Bradley's in? She's gone, Mr. Ward. She's gone? What are you talking about? She was doing so well. I just talked to her doctor Mr. yesterday. Gordon, calm down. She's OK. But you just said. I said she was gone. She doesn't need to be here anymore. She's in a regular room now. I'm sorry if I scared you. You didn't scare me. It's a good thing I'm not a solid food anymore. <laughs> hey, look at this one. The whole class signed it. I can't believe all these cards. I'm going to save them all. Sure, no problem. I'll rent a warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, kiddo. Hi, Mark. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. Hi, guys. You know, you really gave me a scare. Went down to the Lambda Flow units. They said you were gone. And you thought? Gone. Hey, you can't get rid of her that easy. <laughs> You're really doing good, aren't you, kiddo? Well, we'll know how good or bad in a little while. The doctor's bringing down the test results. Nail biting time, you know. Hey, things must have gone pretty well. At least they're out of the Lambda Flow unit. Yeah, well, until they say you're in remission, I'm not going to believe anything. Start believing now, Lee. Tests are in. You are definitely in remission. It's gone. It's all gone. I don't know how long this will last. There are no guarantees, and we'll still have to monitor you every month. But as of now, you're in remission. Oh, thank God. Oh. Thank God. <laughs> I'm going to live. I'm going to live. Oh, Mark.